Good morning and welcome everybody to our Wuthering Sunday service. Now please do sit down. Just a couple of notices. You'll see that there's two lovely bunches of flowers where you're sitting. One is for yourself and one is to give to a neighbour or to a friend or a relative. So please do take both of those uh, bunches home with you. Uh, and for those of you, it's lovely to see some uh, everybody here today. If you haven't been in church for a while, um, just to remind you, to the end of the service, we'll just sit and listen to John's uh, music, and then we'll just quietly um, and, and leave, leave the church. Um, okay, so we're going to uh, just gather our thoughts and just have a little bit of silence whilst we just think about what today means, this the Mothering Sunday. Come, worship God, who was I likened to a mother with her children. God said, when Israel was a child, I loved him. God loved the people of Israel, even when they were disobedient. Yet it was I who taught Ephraim to walk. I took them up in my arms, but they did not know that I knew them. I led them with the cause of human kindness, with bands of love. I was to them like those who lift infants to their cheeks. I bent down to them and fed them. Let's think now about all the things that we wish to say sorry to God for. As we pray, we reflect on the week that's passed and ask the Lord for his forgiveness. Heavenly Father, parents of us all, we know we don't always treat each other as we should. Lord God, forgive us. There are times when we insist on getting our own way, ignoring the feelings of others. Lord God, forgive us. Sometimes we make things worse, saying things that hurt other people, instead of being peacemakers. Lord God, forgive us. <laughs> Father God, you love us, sending your Son Jesus to show us the true meaning of forgiveness. Lord God, forgive us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our special prayer for the week. God of love, passionate and strong, tender and careful, watch over us and hold us all the days of our life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We we'll now hear the Old Testament reading, which today is taken from the first book of Samuel. So, in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, Because I asked the Lord for him. When her husband, Elkanah, went up with his family to offer the annual sacrifice to the Lord and to fulfil his vow, Hannah did not go. She said to her husband, After the boy is weaned, I will take him and present him before the Lord, and he will live there always. Do what seems best to you, her husband, Elkanah, told her. Stay here until you weaned him. Only may the Lord make good his word. So the woman stayed at home and nursed her son until she had weaned him. After he was weaned, she took the boy with her, young as he was, along with a three year old bull, an ephah, a flower, and a skin of wine, and brought him to the house of the Lord of Shur. When the bull had been sacrificed, they brought the boy to Eli. And she said to him, Pardon me, Lord, my Lord, as 
strong as you live, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I pray for this child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked of him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life, he will be given over to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. This is the word of the Lord. So it's Mothering Sunday today, and this week I have given quite a bit more thought than I would usually do uh, to Mothering Sunday. I wonder if that's because of this being the week that International Women's Day was held. Over the years I've often wondered at the proximity of International Women's Day to the Women's World Day of Prayer or the World Day of Prayer, as it is now called. In this parish, it is the Mother's Union that provide flowers as gifts. And there have been times over recent years when it has been suggested, for all sorts of reasons, that the word Mother is removed from the name of Mother's Union. So all lots of thoughts going on in my head, probably quite a bit muddled. And I do also wonder if I thought a little bit more about Mothering Sunday this year, because last year we were not able to meet together. It was the first Sunday of lockdown. There was no service in this church. There were no gifts of flowers. There were no family get-togethers. And I also wonder if the events of this week involving the abduction and murder of Sarah Everard have also made me think a little more. So what is Mothering Sunday? My wondering took me to delve a little deeper into the history of this day. When did it begin? Well, it did begin quite a long time ago, in the Middle Ages. It's not a modern invention. At first, it was a simple call to go to worship at the Mother Church, to go to worship at the Cathedral. It probably involved a pilgrimage, a pilgrimage of a kind, and it is said that local church banners were carried as they processed to the cathedral. But of course, like many things, human nature came to the forefront and different groups, different churches vied to be near the front of the procession and it became unseemly of worship. And as the centuries went by, Mothering Sunday changed, it developed. It developed into visiting the church you were baptised in. And then it developed once more into a time when domestic servants, apprentices, were able to go home to be with their family and to go to church with their family. This day off to visit family began sometime in the 18th century. And they would take food with them 
In a way, this is where the tradition of the Simnel cake comes from. And I'm sure that you've read that the idea of the Simnel cake is so that women, you know, young girls in service could practice and show how well they were doing in the skill of kitchen work. But it seems that really the reason for taking food, for taking Simnel cake, was to provide food at a time of the year where food was getting scarce. It was simply a way of stocking up the food cupboard. With the Simnel cake, I, would, I, I doubt that it was exactly like it is now, it was a food that was high in calories. But the other thing I learned about Simnel cake this, this year is that there were different Simnel cakes depending on where you lived in the country. And you might like this fact, that the Simnel cake you're able to buy in the supermarkets today is the Lancashire Simnel cake. That is the one that has survived. Over the years, more changes have happened to mothering Simnel and I'm sure you agree, we have a much more commercialised event. It's not thought of that this is something to do with the church or to do with God. And although many of us think of it as being a day of joy, I know that for many it is also a day of pain. There are children that have no mother. There are women who have no children. And it is a very painful day for them. And I know my experience of um, ministry in the church that this is a day that some people do not come to church because it is too painful. But Mothering Sunday can be a day when we can remember love and the source of love. But the fact that all love comes from God. In today's reading, of both readings, we can see love being acted out. In our Old Testament story, in our Old Testament reading, we have a part of the story of Hannah, and I'm going to sort of expand a little bit, um, sort of Think, picking up on what happened before and what happens afterwards. The verses that come before paint a picture of a man with two wives. One wife who has had children, and the other, the one that he loves most, who has none. And each year, they go up to the temple to pray. And each year, Hannah would go up to the temple and pray to God for the gift of a child. So much so that one year she is so distressed that as she prays, Eli, the priest, accuses her of being drunk. Fortunately, Hannah speaks up and explains her situation. And our reading this morning tells us the outcome, that Hannah becomes pregnant and Samuel is born. So first out of this story, there is the love of God in the giving of a gift. Hannah pours out her heart again and again. Her deepest desire is a child. She desires this with her whole being. And God hears her cry. And Hannah becomes pregnant. Second, we have this act of love that encouraging words can give. When we speak encouraging words, we show the other person that we love them that we care for them. And it is so simple to speak encouraging words. In Hannah's story, 
At first, Eli, the priest, thinks she is drunk. And I don't know about you, but to my mind, it seems strange, a strange thing to say. But I would imagine like those processions to the cathedral in the Middle Ages. Drunkenness was, maybe pro uh, was probably common as people came up to the temple each year. But Hannah continues to pour out her heart. She pours it out to Eli, giving him the reason for her behaviour. And his response is one of encouragement. Go in peace, and may the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. Another way of showing love is to serve someone. Service often involves sacrifice. And in this story of Hannah, sacrifice is very much included. She had made a vow to God that the child she bore would be in God's service forever. Can you imagine the sacrifice that Hannah was willing to make to be given the gift of a child, a long-wanted child, and then in turn to offer that gift back to God. Today is usually a day when mothers are waited on hand and foot. They might have breakfast in bed, they might have a nice lunch prepared for them, but maybe not in these COVID times. But our mums and our dads, they serve us and they make sacrifices for us every day. I think of the many sacrifices that have made, been made this year due to the lockdown. The mothers who have juggled childcare with supporting learning at home with working from home. The mothers who go without eating so that a child can eat. We heard that testimony so powerful from Marcus Rashford's mother when she talked about what it was like bringing him up and his siblings. Of course, our example of sacrifice and service we gain from our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who came to serve us and who came to die for us. Hannah showed her gratitude to God, who gave her heart's, her, who gave her, her heart's desire by giving her the thing that was most precious to her back to him. When they were due to visit the temple the following year, Hannah remained at home with Samuel. She stayed at home with Samuel until he was weaned. And that was probably much later than we would think of today. Because we would tend to think of a child being weaned in the first year it is likely that he was probably nearer four years old when he was fully weaned. And it was at that point that Hannah returned to the temple with Samuel and dedicated his life to serving God in the temple. And if you were to continue reading through the book of Samuel, you would find out more of how Samuel served God. So this Mothering Sunday, I wonder how we can give. I wonder how we can serve the Lord. And I wonder how we can show love to those around us. I'd like to finish with a, a prayer that I came across this morning uh, from Pete Gray. I pray for mothers. 
I pray for mothers today. We pray for joy, for orphans, comfort, for not yet mothers, hope, for single mothers, grace, for those who are lonely, family. We ask for grace today for the mothers of prodigals and for those who have lost children and for those who don't know where their children are. May the embrace of grace displace shame for mothers in prison for those who can't feed a baby, for those who miscarried or had an abortion. And Lord, may those who never held their own child, for whom today is sadder than it is happy, know the love and joy of parenting in the family of God. Amen. Please stand to affirm our prayer. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church and the world. Cherish in the tender love of God. As our Lord grew to be a man under his mother's care, may his church be as a mother to her children. Bless her ministers with the gift of compassion. Bishops Jill, Philip and Julie, and our own Mary to offer themselves in service to all who come to seek their help. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the world that all its people may be as one family in harmony and peace. Let motherly love be the desire and the ideal of all the human race. Bless those in positions of power, that they may seek to serve and protect those under their authority. Dear Lord, in this week where we celebrate International Women's Day, may we pray that all women, wherever they are in the world, reach their full potential without prejudice and fear of violence. Lord, in your mercy, Let our homes with care and concern for one another. May our families be as the holy family in shared love and worship. Be ever close with the gift of your unfailing love to the mothers and children in our community. In our village cycle of prayer, we remember and pray for those who live in Walden's Lane. Let's give thanks to the Mother's Union and those who have spent time this week making the flowers for the church. Lord, in your mercy, have mercy on the mothers who are in distress, those who have lost children through death or estrangement, 
those whose children are sick in body or mind. Grant them strength in their affliction and healing for those they love. O oh God our Father, as we praise thee for thy goodness and mercy through the past years, so we beseech thee to continue thy work of healing among us. Grant to physicians, surgeons, nurses, and all who work with them, wisdom and skill, patience, strength, and tenderness, that by their endeavour many may be made whole in body and mind. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Pray for the departed who have known human love on earth and have passed into the divine love of heaven. May they be in peace and joy with Blessed Mary and all the saints. We pray in the name of Christ who loves us as a mother loves her children. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son. Our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's say the Lord's Prayer, trusting in the compassion of God, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we conclude our service today with these words. God of power, may the boldness of your spirit transform us. May the gentleness of your spirit lead us. May the gifts of your spirit equip us to serve and worship you, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.